Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fields. Okay, so Wednesday we left off um, halfway through proving this theorem. So let me recall what we were doing. So we were saying, so before the thing we already did on, on Wednesday was say what happens when you have a transcendental element in an extension. And we concluded adding pi to the rationals is just like getting a variable because um, all the all the rational functions are different. Uh, if you add an algebraic element, something something totally different happens. If you add square root of two to the rationals, that's not just square root of two is not doesn't behave like x because x squared minus two is just x squared minus two. But of course, if I if I plug in square root of two there, I have I get zero. So um, everything everything that's algebraic is the root of some polynomial by definition. And the thing is, it's the root of many polynomials. Square root of two is the root of this polynomial, but it's also obviously the root of this polynomial because multiplying things by zero is just gonna give me zero. Uh, so the thing is, there's always one polynomial which is irreducible. Out of all of them, there's only one that is irreducible unless you multiply by three or something, uh, then you can get, you know, out of all the irreducible ones, there's only one that's monic. And, and that's the best one. Um, one reason that it's the best one is that it's the polynomial with smallest degree um, that it's a root of. And for this smallest degree reason, we call it the minimal polynomial of, of the element. Uh, should we call it minimum polynomial, but... Uh, <clears throat> right, so let's prove that there is one best polynomial. Um, so there is just there is just one one step to this proof, really. Um, the set of polynomials, the polynomials in F that uh, alpha is the root of is an ideal. So I'm just going to call it I. So that's what I did on Wednesday. Um, but basically, it's clear if, you, if you're root of two polynomials, you're root of the sum. If you're root of any polynomial, if you're root of a polynomial and you multiply that by something, you're still a root, right? Um, so. Um, so, I mean, I only know one thing about ideals of the polynomial ring over a field, and I only need to know one thing, um, that they're all principal. Since, if it join X is a PID, I is principal. And being principal means that there is a generator such that uh, I is the ideal generated by this element. So um, of course, if you generate the ideal, you, you are in the ideal. By definition, that means that alpha is the root of G. Um, so now, Need to I need to prove that it's irreducible and that nothing. I need to well I need to prove. I guess what do I have now that there is a polynomial? I need to prove that it's irreducible and unique being irreducible, and then everything else has a larger degree. So, G is irreducible. So, how can I do that? Suppose that G factors H1 times H2, I should reach a contradiction. Um, so, um, well, I should apply the one thing I know about G, um, which is that it's, um, which is that it's in, in this ideal. 
if I plug in x equals to alpha, what I have is, is that I get zero. So I have these two polynomials Uh, well, not, not these polynomials because I, I evaluated them. So I have these two elements of the field E and they, the product is zero. So of course, that means that one of them has to be zero. Um, so say, doesn't matter which is which, right? We could relabel them. So um, say it's the first one, that's a root. So now, alpha is the root of h1. Um, so this, by, by definition of i, I said i is the set of all polynomials that alpha is the root of. So h1 is one of these polynomials. And what I said, the, the one thing I knew about i is that it's generated by something. So, uh, well, by definition of H1 being, being in the principal ideal, G must divide H1. Now, um, G divides H1. What else do I know? Um, I know another thing. I know that I, I started saying that G is the product of H1 and something else. So this asterisk here is telling me that H1 also divides X. So they, they divide each other. Uh, the only way that could be, I mean, they, they have the same degree. Really, I'm done here. Uh, G of X is H1 X times a constant. So I said, so what did I just say? I, say, I said, if G factors, then one of the polynomials in the factorization is a constant and the other has the same degree. Um, so that's that's what it means to be reducible that you can't factor except in this silly way. So G is irreducible. <clears throat> okay, so that takes care of uh, some of this statement. So I guess I should turn the page and recall the statement. So I have an element in an extension, algebraic, break, and I have G is the ideal of polynomials that vanish at alpha. It's an ideal of polynomials over F of X. Um, over E of X, it's a very boring ideal. That's not readable. Well, um, I just showed that G is irreducible. Want to show G is the only irreducible. Um, so I guess I should have chosen G to be monic um, to begin with, who cares? Um, the generator of the ideal, I mean, this is this is something we saw. Two, two things generate the same ideal if they're the same up to multiplication by a unit, which means up to, in this case, multiplication by a constant. So just you're free to multiply G by any constant you like, just make it so that it's monic. So how do you, how do I show this? Well, say I have anything else in the ideal. By definition of being in the ideal, of the principal ideal, uh, G must divide H. So, um, well, either H is reducible and then I'm done. 
or h is g times a constant. And then I'm done. All right. <clears throat> right. So I know that there is a, a special key. It's irreducible. Uh, it's monic. I show that it's the only irreducible. So the only the the last thing I need to show is that um, G has the smallest degree out of the polynomials such that f of alpha is zero. Um, and actually, while we're here, I'm going to say bonus. Um, not only does it have smallest degree, it divides all of them. So it's really what I just said. If, if h of alpha is 0, that means that h of x is in the ideal, by definition of the ideal. The ideal is the set of things that vanish when you plug in alpha. Um, the ideal is generated by g. So that means that the ideal is exactly the set of uh, multiples of g. So how could you be in the set of multiples of g? Well, you could if you're a multiple of g. And of course, if you're a multiple of g, either you're zero. I'm ignoring zero here. Zero vanishes at alpha. Uh, either you're zero or um, you're, you have bigger degree. So that's that. That's theorem what? Uh, 2110 in the book. So, um, Okay, example. So what's the minimal polynomial? Of root two. You, you always have to say which field you're over. Um, I mean, or you need to know. Um, so, well, I mean, it's, it's x squared um, minus 2. Because um, when, it, when you plug in root 2, you get 0. And f of x is irreducible. And if you if you are a root and you and the polynomial is irreducible, that's all you need to check by this theorem. That would make you the smallest degree and everything else. Um, the guarantee is that any other polynomial, this is really an untrivial thing. Any polynomial over the rationals that has root two as a root has um, x squared minus two as a as a divisor. I don't know if you can think of good reasons why this would be true, other than the theorem we just proved. Um, let me know in the comments below. As you say, um, so so this is a minimal, minimal polynomial. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, let's do a, a stupid example. The minimal polynomial of root two over the field um, Q adjoint root, root two. So x squared minus two is not irreducible over this field because this factorization works over this field. So the minimal polynomial is x minus root 2, which is a very silly thing to say because 
for any a in a field, x minus a is going to be the minimal polynomial over that field. This is really only interesting if, if the element is not in the field. Um, but it, I mean, at least you can see in this example that it, it depends on the field you're over. OK, let's do, um, let's do the last silly example. So, the minimal polynomial of root two plus root three over Q. Um, so, one method to find this, is it the best method? I don't know. Um, it's it's a method I like because it's it's very it's very naive and it works. Um, you try to you you start writing powers. until you can find a relation and and this works um, and if i give you a computer you know to solve some equations uh, you will get it much faster so okay maybe i don't need to write the zeros power um, because it probably fits in your in our brains that that's going to be one. Okay, so the square. Um, so the square of that is the square root of two plus the square root of three, both squared. So that's two plus three, and then the double product is two root six. Um, okay, so I can't find the relation between those uh, those three, so I better keep going. Um, so, I mean, maybe there's a relation between root six, root two, and root three that I'm not aware of. Like, I don't know, maybe root two plus root three is two root six or something, but that seems unlikely. I mean, I secretly know that it's false. But... <clears throat> okay, so the cube, the cube is the product of the first power and the second power. So that's going to be 5 root 2 plus 5 root 3. Uh, so that's everything times 5. And what's everything plus, uh, times root 6? Um, so 2 root 6 times root 2 is 4 root 3. And 2 root 6 times root 3 is 6 root 2. Right? So I think that's, I think that's it. So like you're going to correct me or anything. OK, um, I don't I don't know what to do yet. So I'm going to keep writing powers. So the fourth power is the square of the square. So that's going to be, um, so the sum of the squares, 5 squared is 25. 2 root 6 squared is 24. So that's going to be 49 uh, plus 2 times 5 plus times 2 root 6, which is 20 root 6. So now I'm going to erase this a little bit. Just compute it in your head. So now I feel like there's got to be a relation because I have five things. Um, I mean, this is looking like a system of linear equations that I'm trying to solve. Um, if you just, if you look at the, at the coefficients here, and I think of trying to, trying to set up some equation with involving these, um, there's going to be, there's going to be four equations one for the constant coefficient, one for the root two coefficient, one for the root three coefficient, one for the root six coefficient. So 
four equations. And if I choose a coefficient, if I go a zero, let's say, let's call this alpha. Um, we see C4 alpha to the four. I'm counting five unknowns here. Um, I'm looking for a solution. I mean, this equals to zero is definitely, definitely has a solution, which is make everything zero. I'm looking for a different solution. Um, and maybe you remember from linear algebra that if you have more equation, more unknowns than equations, you're guaranteed to find a solution. Um, or you could even take just just take these numbers and put them in a matrix. And if you remember your linear algebra, rank of the, this matrix can only be can be almost four because it has four columns. But that means that the five rows have to be there has to be a relation between them. Um, And I mean, I can just, I can just look at this and sort of guess because for the last, for, for these, for, so for the root six term to disappear, I need to, uh, this coefficient needs to be negative 10 times the other coefficient so that I will get zero here. But now, so now these are zero, so I don't care. And now I have here 49 minus 50. So this has to be one. All right, um, so. Maybe you could have thought of a better way to re reach here. Um, does this make sense? I wonder. Let's see. So it's a way to find out, um, which is to plug into a calculator. So this minus 10 times that squared plus one. Oh, there you go. Oh, I mean, it's making an error here, but that's good. That's gonna be true. Um, it's making a rounding error, but it's giving me zero to to fourteen decimals. It's giving me zero. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did it correctly. All right. <clears throat> so this is a polynomial. Um, so that has um, alpha as a root. Is it uh, the minimal one? Uh, well, for that, I would have to show that it's irreducible, I guess, or either that or show that there's no smaller degree polynomial. Um, give me time to think, I guess. So is this irreducible? Um, you know what I should do? I should um, I should just show directly that it can't be, that it has to be, sorry. Um, because I can, what if I factor it in the complex numbers? Um, uh, 
so the thing is this this looks very tempting because I know I know how to find the roots of of this stuff because it's it's a quadratic equation in x squared. Uh, so I can use the quadratic formula minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So that's 5 plus minus square root of 96 divided by 2. 96 is 3 times, um, is 3 times 32, which is 6 times 16. So 4 root 6 divided by 2. 5 plus minus 2 root 6. Um, so that's x squared. So x, so the solutions are the roots of uh, the, the, the square roots of, of these numbers. So I wonder how the hell I'm going to find the roots of these numbers. Um, well, if only I had found the roots of this polynomial already. Uh, square root of 2 plus square root of 3. When you square it, you get 5 plus 2 root 6. So one root of of this number is root 2 plus root 3. Um, and the other root, well, I, I guess it's a negative real number. Um, is negative root. Of course, if I know one root, I know the other root. So, um, I mean, I can take a while, I guess, of what, of what the square root of um, 5 minus 2 root 6 is. I don't know. I don't know, but if I have, you know, it's just, it's just screaming that solutions are plus minus root two plus minus root three. Um, so why, why don't I guess that? This is four minus five root six plus three. No, not four, root, root two squared is two, not four. Uh, and I don't know why I wrote a five there. <laughs> All right, root two squared is two, and then two times root two root three is negative root two, uh, two root six, and then root three squared is three, which together is five minus two root six. So the other solutions are all together, they are plus minus root two plus minus root three, um, which gives me four, uh, because you can choose two signs for each. And it's a total of four choices. So over the complex numbers, this is not irreducible. It's, it factors this way. Because I found all the roots. Um, so it has no rational roots, which means that it's not gonna factor as a product of two uh, of a degree three and degree one thing. It can't have a degree three uh, factor. So if this reduces over C, if this reduces over Q, sorry. Uh, it should be as degree two and degree two. Um, and there's just basically there's three possibilities. And I can check that th those are not in Q. Um, so, so a degree two factor mm, 
must have um, must be the products of of the of two of these. And I mean, I don't need to multiply it out. Just um, the because you know what happens to a the x uh, to a degree two polynomial in terms of its roots um, is negative the sum of the roots. And if you just stare at this polynomial, there's no two roots that you can add to get zero. Oh yes, there is, <laughs> to get a rational number. So for example, if you do root two minus root three plus root two plus root three, you get, uh, what do you get? Two root two, which is not a rational number. If you do root two minus root three plus negative root two minus what? root three, you get a what? negative two root three, which is not a rational number. If you do, um, root two minus root three plus its opposite, you're gonna get zero, which is a rational number. But then if you multiply them, so if you, if you multiply them, you're gonna have um, five root six. We already did this multiplication before, uh, which is again, not in the rational. So just, eh, it's kind of annoying and long, but it's definitely doable. There's a finite number of steps, it's doable. If there's an infinite number, it's not, that's how it works in theoretical math. I mean, it shouldn't, but it kind of is. <clears throat> All right, so that was an example of a minimal polynomial. Really, I mean, really the complicated part was showing that something was irreducible, which was complicated before and is complicated now. What can I say? Okay, uh, moving on, moving on. Um, oh yeah, so this is just a word. Um, If you take the minimal polynomial, it has a degree, right? We call that the degree of the element. So um, the degree of root two over Q is two the degree of root two plus root three over Q is four. The degree of I over R is two. All right. Um, all right, I guess I'm gonna leave it here. Um, that was that was a lot. I go much faster if there's no one here. All right. See you Monday.